Okay, so what I'm going to paint today, okay, is is this, okay? So that is uh, Achill, all right? So the very, very west of uh, Ireland, and this beautiful country of ours. And uh, next stop, America, isn't it? So, and to be honest, it's, a, it's really another dull photograph, isn't it? Because most photographs are actually dull, especially when they're taken by somebody like me. Um, you know, I just use my phone to, uh, to to take my reference photographs. And you've got to make something more of it. And I, I like what Paul Henry uh, did with his paintings. It's our job as painters to, um, to, to make things more interesting, isn't it? Okay, so those are the colours. The usual, uh, the usual suspects, let me put them in order. I always like to have them in order. There, that's the order in which I, I put them out. And uh, let's get going. What am I going to paint with? Are these brushes here? Okay, so that one's about an inch or less, three quarters of an inch, uh, a short flat bright. Um, what's this one? Doesn't even say what number it is, but uh, it's a filbert, then a smaller filbert, and then I've got this uh, very small short flat bright here. Okay, all right, so around that way, there's my, there's my solvent. Let me move on to the canvas. There you go, there's my canvas. It's a white uh, surface today. And what I'm going to do is put on, put the white out there. Griffin alkyds. I like the way they start setting sort of uh, during the painting. It's, uh, I think it helps, helps me anyway. There's the cadmium yellow pale hue. Permanent rose. Cobalt blue. Put, put quite a lot of that on. I'm just gonna put a touch of ivory black because it's, it's on my um, beginner's um, palette. Which this is the what I call the McSherry palette, which is really just aimed at beginners. Um, but it's a very good palette for achieving the widest gamut possible of uh, painting. Uh, I'm going to put that uh, last one is burnt sienna. Okay, so there you go. I've got the whole bunch, kith and caboodle, that I need there. So I'm doing the, uh, a burnt sienna wash. You know, and it's quite dilute. There's quite a lot of uh, solvent in it, just to help it move around. Just cover that area quickly. And I was just saying to my students all week that whenever you uh, go out to paint, you know, en plein air, you should have a plan, like before you arrive at your destination, because it almost doesn't matter what the destination is, or indeed, if it's a still life or a portrait, you have a plan, you know, the plan might be, I'm going to paint this in a pointillistic style, or I'm, I'm going to paint it in just vertical strokes, or uh, in greys, or in vibrant colours, or, or the wrong colours, you know, that, that's it, or I'm going to pay no respect to um, uh, uh, perspective at, at all, you know, those are your sort of concepts, your, your plans. Gosh, that is very, very bright. I think I'm going to see if I can turn down the uh, the vibrancy of that. It's 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 far too vibrant. That looks a bit more like it should be. Right, good. So what I'm going to do is uh, is you, you've got the picture up there. You can see it there. So I'm going to. paint a version of, of, of this um, scene that's in front of us. I'm going to bring it down, I'm going to bring the sky down, because one of the, the lovely things about the, in the west of Ireland is the, um, are the skies. And it's, it's Ireland's big sky country, I suppose, like the Americans say, you know. Let me just grab.
I'll do a bit of a drawing. It's all I need to do. Hold on for a second. Huh? Give me a, a moment there. Attention design. Ah, oh, yes. Okay, got it now. Up there. There. And this other headland coming there, which is closer to us. Yeah, I was looking at uh, a lot of uh, Henry's stuff this this week, and he really was, uh, you know, for me, just a um, an impressionist. But he managed to sort of develop a, a kind of a, a language, visual language, that suited Ireland rather than Provence or something. You no, know, like all the other painters were painting it's, it's it's quite sort of uh impressive i think that he made ireland look like ireland yeah of course uh but it sort of in a suite of of colors that suited the landscape so that kind of comes down in vaguely in a triangle there like that i'm going to put that darker spit of uh, rock coming out to about there. Okay, so I think that's my drawing. All the clouds are going to go up there like that. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to block in. I'm going to put in my darks first, okay? So let's grab some blue and some burnt sienna. It's going to get these darks in so it'll give me an idea of where I am like the bones of the painting some darks in there in there coming out to sea there usual uh, things apply give the impression that we're stuck on the side of a, a, a cliff Standing there with our en plein air pochard box painting. The wind and our long flowing hair. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is make up a mix. The, the general um, hue of this painting is it's kind of blues, really. So I need something to differentiate. Uh, the painting from uh, or that that part of the painting from the other so I'm going to uh, do it kind of reds around here for the rocks not that kind of I don't know slightly sort of pallid looking uh, sort of greenish gray really sort of on the rocks there I don't want that I, I, I need to make this um, painting sort of have its own character you now and the character that you'd want to have a, a to to be with you know to look at so I'm going to grab and make an orange, put a bit of blue into it. So kind of an orangey grey, I think. Okay, and I'm just going to mass that in there, across the top of that part there. Okay, and that's that bit. The next thing is, I'm going to put in that spit of green field coming uh, around down there towards the sea. So blue, excuse me, and blue and yellow. Put a bit of red into it to make it more natural, more yellow. Put that across there like that, up there down to the sea okay above that there's an interesting thing there is that that um that um, that body of land behind the green part it's far uh, uh, 
it's further away, slightly distant looking, and I am going to make that into a kind of a a bit of a dark, bit of a dark uh, blue, I think. We'll see what happens, okay? On there, because in a painting you're you're telling a story. You're not um, you're not taking a photograph. Okay, I've got that there. Next thing I'm going to do is the sea. So blue plus white, cobalt blue plus white. Make sure I've got enough. Cobalt blue plus white. I think plus a little bit of yellow. Hmm. And a little bit of red. See what that does. Okay, and that means I can mass that in there. all across there like that in a big block so now I'm going to uh, I'm going to do that distant mountain okay and I want to do that in a in a blue a lighter blue Add a bit of red to that, and a bit of a bit of white. Okay. I'm just going to leave that little bit there because uh, I want to put a a kind of a Manila color in there. So there's one part of the. There, right, okay. There's my mountain beyond. And now the sky. The sky for me is in two parts. Uh, it, there's a kind of a, a blue, a light blue at the top. And then a pink part, so that, as it goes towards the horizon, in general terms. I, I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to that blue. Make sure I make enough. It's a very light blue with a bit of uh, yellow. So it's a slightly greenish lighting, uh, greenish color. There's a big block. And now I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about how my clouds are gonna look. Because the clouds that are actually there, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not gonna paint them like that because if you were there, they'd be moving all over the place. That's not bad. They'd be moving across the sky very fast, I think. Uh, let me put in something down there too. So that's all a big block. Is that the painting completely blocked in? No, not quite, because I want to do the um, those pinky areas, okay? So white plus yellow plus red. There, sculpt my headland back a bit. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So I've got I've got some sky down there now. So that that's all blocked in. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is go back into my um, the rocky area in the foreground. I'm going to make up make up some a shadow version of of that uh, of that rock color. So blue. Uh, is basically a grey, so all the colours plus white. And put in some shaded sort of areas there. So this is just a, a kind of a, a chaos of uh, strokes, is what I'm aiming for here. So in, instead of painting those actual rocks, I'm just painting uh, rocks. Yeah. Okay, got that lot there, and even in there. We move on. Make up a, a lighter mix now of the that Manila coloured. Uh, For the rocks, I'm going to put some of those in. Over there. Dabs. Okay. I'm going to move over to my mountain now and I'm going to grab some of that mountain colour and I'm going to mix a little bit of red and, and yellow into it, but make sure it's distant. And I'm going to put in uh, some indication of the light. The light's coming from the west, from the left. So put in indications that their light is hitting those mountains. It's very subtle. I'm not sure if you can even I think you can see it on the on the screen. I'm just looking at my screen so So that's um aerial perspective, isn't it? So it's things get getting paler as they recede from us. Right. Now, I'm going to do that, uh, that larger mass, just slightly closer to us. Okay, so my strokes are still fairly big. This cliff edge comes down like that. And there too. And I'm going to mix up a kind of mix some red into that dark, that green that I had. And I'm going to put some subtleties in here as well. So but without getting um, into detail. I'm going to close that up, that gap there. come up a little bit. Okay, so that's more or less done. I'm going to put some subtleties into that uh, that green strip. I'm going to mix a bit of uh, white into that green to make it pale. And if I can go here like that. But I'm not going to get rid of in of that uh, dark green entirely. Yeah. Just want some undulations in the land, I suppose. And then I'm going to go back to the rocks. And I need some darks in there, so burnt umber and blue. I'm going to sort of start 
describing fissures in the rocks a little bit. They're kind of random patterns. Across the top of this one here. As it comes down to meet the water. I'm not going to do those little rocks sticking out of the water until the, the very end. I often wonder whether, I, I, I'm pretty sure that um, Paul Henry would have been taking these studies back to his studio to uh, finish the work in the studio. I think they're quite big, some of those paintings. It's giving me the impression of that. Fisher is in those rocks, okay, all right. Now, back into the sky. Uh, make sure I've got the, the right part here, get some blue. I'm gonna mix a little bit of red into it, a blue as well, just to make a slightly different, because I still like to do the, um, the you know, kind of mottled sort of sky, how do you say, the multicoloured sky, but it's just that in this painting, I want it to be, I don't want it to be so obvious. So there's a, it's a greeny blue, and I'm just adding in a sort of reddy blue in places just to make it more interesting. to let's shape those hills a little bit okay now I want the sky to come become lighter as it comes towards the the horizon so let's put some yellow and white into the into that sky mix here And have a gradation going upwards. Um, and here too. And I can shape my that bit of land there. Bring that down there. Okay, there's that. Now, I think I might start uh, thinking about my clouds and how I want those to look. So I'm going to mix up a, a kind of a, I suppose kind of a grey really. Hmm, a bluey grey. I wanted these monumental clouds. I think that's the, the, the nice story that... Uh, Paul Henry was fond of, uh, of telling. He was an American, uh, kind of fetched up in Ireland and uh, used to do uh, a lot of travel posters. One of these railway posters, you know, of the, of the, of the day. Really good. 
So I, I suppose then he was something of a of an illustrator, which kind of endears him to me, and because I went through that route as well. So let's put this in. Dogs in there, okay. And now uh, let's make up a kind of ochre kind of mix. So yellow, red, white, and a bit of blue, touch of blue. Let me do another layer of, of clouds. You know, the, the aim really to, to have dramatic, a dramatic scene, which, to be honest, is probably what you're likely to get if you go to, to Ackel, rather than clear skies and uh, and sunshine. Up there, like that. Bruised skies. Even that one there. And no pure white. Mm -hmm. Even gets him. Dark skies down there. And now some monumental cumulonimbus. I'll try and let the, the clouds suggest themselves to me. So. Clouds in front of clouds in front of clouds in front of clouds. piled on top of each other. And then I'm going to add some white into that. Um, that light ochre mix. I have some coming down there. And there. the colours going into each other. It looks as if a nuclear bomb has gone off in, the, in nearby Connemara. Okay, B to the sea. Blue plus a little bit of red plus a bit of white. Okay, I'm gonna Start working on a bit of variation in the in the water. I'm going to darken it towards the the far away part. And there are variations, as, as I suppose you, what you're looking at, what, what could it be? I suppose it would be the, uh, um, the tides and, the, you know, they cause different areas of the water to look different. Okay, it's got that. Let's shape this rock a little bit. There, and that can up there, complete the sea into there. Okay, that'll do. 
Okay, so now we've got some C. Back into the rocks, I think. I mean, my brush is getting smaller now. My dabs are getting smaller. So let me grab some blue and burnt sienna again. And now I can start adding stuff at the water's edge. Give a bit of a direction. When you look at rocks uh, by the sea, they with all these exposed rocks, they've always got a kind of a directional sort of element to them, you know, as if they all sort of formed in the same direction, which I suppose is what would happen, isn't it? I'm going to raise that one up a little bit. I want that rock to be a bit less even looking there. And back in with some different hues. Push that up. Don't want to over describe things. Okay, I'm going to put in a, a bit more yellow into that green for that green strip put a bit of red into that as well and I'm gonna put in some variations coming down to the water and even there for example now that headland behind. I'm going to lighten it uh, somewhat and maybe make it slightly slightly greener but I don't want to I don't want to make it too green. Oh that's, that's that might that might do it. So it's still slightly blue and and faded away into the distance. And there's some stuff going on in, in that part there. And across there, let that come up. I'm going to grab some white, put it into that. And change this. Mm. No, don't want it like that. Coming down to the sea there. Another one there. Across there. And that's it. And then there's a dark. coming down there like that. Okay, back to the sky. I want to fill in that. I have to just put my elbow into the paint. That's nice. There we go. I'm going to shape these so to make them more like they're supposed to in there. Coming across there. Down. And now shape the the land back. So coming in from the other side. From the mount from the mountain side there. Shape that down there like that.
coming down to the water's edge. And even that. Okay. Push that out. It needs a bit more. Now I want to lose the edge on that because it's far away. I don't want it to be sharp in contrast. I'm going to lose the edge as if there's the wind is blowing the moisture over the top of the mountain. Lose that edge. Make it less distinct. Complete that part there. Back into the clouds. I want to slightly kind of delineate some of those clouds. Make them more dramatic. darker as the least amount of light is getting in down here there's a storm out to sea when I was learning Irish in London <laughs> believe it or not I uh, a teacher was quoting some he, the people who uh, you know, fished for a living out in the west of Ireland, they didn't, uh, and I'm sure it was the same everywhere, they didn't like to learn to swim because it would just prolong the agony if they were shipwrecked. So they, they, they didn't want to learn to swim, but one of them was quoted as saying, and it's translation from the Irish, you know, some of us do be falling into holes in the sea and uh, some of us do be drowning. You even get an Irish lesson in this clip, this demonstration. Okay, I'm going to start doing some of the um, I don't know what you call it the, the, the foam, I suppose, the, the foam that's crashing in. I'm going to start out with a kind of a, a light blue. Even that can come down here as well. There's lots of that going on here and here. So I'm doing all these little sort of uh, reasonably sort of, I don't know what you call it, heavy uh, strokes. For the foam and now I'm going to grab some white this is really the only circumstance where I'd use uh, pure white uh, and I load the brush and just leave the paint on rather than brushing it on Little white horses. 
Isn't that what they call them? Okay, now what do I want to do? I just want to sort of make more of some of those clouds, actually. Let me put a little bit of green down here. Multicolored skies, even though they look stormy, they can still be still be beautiful. Close that up. And now I'm even going to do a little bit more on the, on the sky. A slightly greenish sky. Paul Henry was renowned for doing these monumental skies, monumental clouds. They're stacked up on top of they're almost solid. They almost felt as if they, if they fell on you, you you know you get hurt. They're so voluminous. Let me put in a little bit more white on that. Make and now a pure cobalt blue and white mix. So the sky still kind of scintillates like a like a Monet kind of sky, but m more subtly, I suppose. I shouldn't say that really. Even. Monet was very subtle, but you know what I mean. Maybe I should say Van Gogh or something like that. Uh, I need a little bit of change. or a little bit of variation in these clouds here. Okay, so let me get some, a blue-gray. In some dabs around here just to make sure that there's enough enough of the information to make it into a an optical illusion you know the optical illusion of solid objects in that kind of way turning in and out of the light let's grab some of this blue here and we'll darken horizon line yeah so once again it's the it's the um, blocks that have uh, done all the heavy lifting in the painting everything else is just sort of details on top Oh yes, I was going to do those uh, little sub submerged rocks, wasn't I? Um, they can go in there. I'm not going to over-describe them either. I read somewhere once, and you'd have to look it up yourselves, that the, the mountains in Ireland, the geology of it all, continues all through the Atlantic and rises again in Appalachia. But you'll have to look that up yourself for, to, to verify that as a fact or not. 
these have got their own commotion going on around them. And I'm just going to do something with the top of the mountain here. I'm talking, I'm croaking here because I'm, I'm leaning forward and I'm supporting my own hand as I reach around this bloody webcam. I've gone quiet again, haven't I? Right. Some details on there. I'm making stuff up now um, because, for a start, my head is sort of crooked around the corner. So there must be an easier way to set the the cameras up than this. Lose that definition there as the white water sprays up a little bit. Try and get it so that you can see it. So that, the west of Ireland, go and visit. <laughs>